Thank you, yes. My disclosures. I mean, it's, uh, everyone knows that, you know, when we have a, a fistula, the big problem is correlated to the risk stenosis and the patency rate. And obviously, what is our goal is uh, to keep this fistula working as much as we can for a longer period. And if we have uh, a stenosis, obviously, we have to work on the fistula, try to keep this open. And uh, angioplasty is generally the first treatment uh, uh, line or choice. But many times, according to the location of the lesion and also according to the uh, situation, this is not working as well as we suppose. There are different uh, problems correlated to the fistula that can increase the risk of uh, occlusion. Uh, first of all, there is a, a higher uh, shear stress gradient between an art the artery and the vein. There is also a difference in terms of compliance between the two vessels, the two structures. And uh, also there is the trauma that uh, the needle, when we puncture the, the, the fistula, we can uh, create. Every time that we have this situation, obviously we can stimulate, uh, you know, an endothelial cell damage that can be, you know, the initial step of intima hyperplasia, which is the problem when we have a stenosis. Obviously, first of all, that is a, a clinical problem. You know, the fistula is not working. Uh, there will be a possible of thrombosis, but there are also some other problems that we have to think about. First of all, the, the economical one, because every time patient is coming back, either if it is an office-based procedure or it is with uh, an uh, admission to the hospital, we increase the cost. And then there is also a psychological problem because you know, if a patient is coming back to the hospital one, two, three times, this is something that is uh, a little bit devastating for his uh, 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 mental uh, status. How we can you know, the, the manage this situation? First of all, obviously, we have to try to solve this stenosis. And this is not very easy because there are a lot of uh, problems correlated to the, uh, to the condition, the, the morphology of the uh, fistula, and also the condition that create the, the st uh, stenosis. We also to keep in mind that every time we perform a reintervention, the situation is worse because there is a very aggressive um, proliferation of cell every time we do a dilatation. So every time we have a, a, a native fistula, this is a, a more simple condition. If we have a, a fistula where we have already done uh, a couple of interventions, situation is much, much, much difficult to be managed. Options. We can do a simple PTA. We can do a high pressure PTA. We can use a stand graft. We can use cutting balloon. We can use a cryoplasty, brachytherapy, combined treatment, for example, dilatation, pure bare metal uh, stent. But the problem is that uh, all of them are not working very well. If we analyze the patency rate of all these techniques after six months, they are very, very poor. Uh, you can see for PTA, they are ranging from 23 to 40%, 51% uh, for the stand graft, uh, 42 for high pressure PTA, 47 cutting balloon, 25 uh, cryoplasty, 51 brachytherapy, but it's a three months follow up, and 63% for the combined treatment. But remember that we are talking about a six months follow up. You know, as a, we know as an intervention, that generally everything must work at a six months. And you can see that we have not a very optimal uh, results. This is a, a reason why many investigators start immediately to use the DCB once this uh, device was, uh, I can say, approved in the peripheral, in the colonies before and then in the peripheral. This is a, a, the a study that was performed by an Italian physician published a couple of years ago uh, regarding 26 patients. So you can see that uh, the six months of uh, target lesion primary patency was a uh, 96%. That is a huge difference if you remember the data that I showed you before. And after one year, this data was still over 90%. So the Dracula balloon, according to them, increased tremendously the outcome in terms of patency rate for a fistula. This is also a presentation that was done in the last sales meeting uh, uh, by Kate Steiner regarding the use of, of a fistuloplasty comparative uh, evaluation of DCB versus plain balloon in 93 consecutive patients. You can see again there is a big difference in terms of primary patency, not only at three and six months, but especially after one year with a less incidence of reintervention, 
What is also important according to them, they evaluate also an increased volume uh, flow. This is pretty important because also if it is a little bit of stenosis and the flow could be pretty good, using the DCB we can increase tremendously the amount of flow so that the fistula is working better and this increase the clinical aspect of the patient. Um, Dr. Katsanos and uh, his group did uh, a very uh, interesting uh, uh, randomized study comparing the use of DCB versus uh, standard angioplasty in different situations for uh, uh, failing uh, native uh, AV fistula and AV graft. Uh, 40 patients, and at, after six months, the uh, primary patency was 70% for the DCB versus 25% just for the angioplasty. The same group did also the sub-analysis after one year. You can see that uh, this is uh, uh, indicated in terms of a uh, time frame. The TLR-free survival was uh, three, uh, more than 300 days for the DCB and just 160 days for high pressure PTA. Primary patterns again, two seven days of freedom from uh, DCB and 161 for high pressure uh, balloon. And then also they evaluate the cost because obviously we are going to spend a little bit more money at the beginning using DCB, but as we decrease tremendously the number of the intervention at the final, uh, at the end of the study, we have uh, an increase, I mean, a better outcome in terms of economical point of view using drug or the balloon. And also we have to remember the clinical aspect. This is a single center perspective uh, observational study for 10 patients. They evaluate, you know, the angiographic uh, TLR after, you know, in terms of uh, reduction, lumen reduction of 50%. And uh, again, you can see that the difference between DCB plus PTA. This introduced another concept that is pretty well known in the peripheral, that also in the fistula, when you use a drug or the balloon, we have to think about to vessel preparation. It's not enough just to put a DCB in place and, and inflate it. We have to create, you know, a larger lumen at the beginning. Maybe we can use an, a scoring balloon, we can use a cutting balloon, we use a high pressure balloon, and then use the drug or the balloon just to deliver the drug in place to reduce the intimate preparation. And you can see, you know, in this setting, the a huge difference, you know, between in patency rate between the group with the uh, pre-deal uh, plus DCB versus only the angioplasty. So in conclusion, we can affirm that definitely restenosis is the main drawback for uh, fistulas. DCB can play an important role. Uh, obviously, this can uh, reduce the cost, but also, in a very important, in my opinion, increase the quality of life of the patients reducing the number of the intervention. There are some questions still open. First of all, we can use the DCB for all kinds of lesions. Uh, what about, you know, the, uh, we can use DCB also in case of not mature uh, fistulas uh, just to improve the outcome. And uh, what we are looking for, obviously, for more randomized studies, you know, to get more data. Thank you for your attention.